Hey, this is Mike. I'm visiting Van Underwood Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram in Whiteville, North Carolina, very close to Wilmington, North Carolina. And I am checking out a 2015 Chrysler 300C. And this one is just completely loaded with everything. So hold on to your seat. We are going to explore every little facet of this vehicle. So Here's the key, one of the features right off the bat, let me go ahead and do this because it's a hot day and I want some air conditioning on the inside. It has remote start. So there's the key there. And all I have to do is make sure the vehicle is secure and locked. And it is. So I just double tap this little button here. It beeps at you, but you can disable that if you want. And it starts up. Now this one's powered by the 3.6 liter V6 with the 8 speed automatic transmission. And you, of course, you can get the 5.7 liter Hemi if you want, but the V6 is a really good option. It has almost 300 horsepower and paired with the eight speed transmission, it is crazy fast and smooth and a really good option. So, you know, some people just kind of assume that the C always has a V8. Well, this one is still rear wheel drive vehicle, but it has the V6, but Trust me, you got to take one for a test drive. It's, it's no joke. The, v, the 3.6 liter Pentastar is a no joke engine, especially when paired with the 8 speed transmission. Gets 31 miles per gallon plus on the highway with almost 300 horsepower. It's crazy. But, anyways, here is the 20 inch aluminum wheels, and man, are they awesome. To me, I think they're kind of. Not super shiny, just like a soft shininess. That's almost like a, I don't know, just not quite satin, but not quite super shiny chrome. To where it's too cheesy. But man, the 20 inch wheels is the way to go on this vehicle. It just stands out. So here in the front, we have the uh, parking sensors, these little round, little round circles there. LED fog lights. We have the LED accent light around here. And I do have, uh, check out my uh, Chrysler 300 at night video. I've got a full detailed at night video on a Chrysler 300. And HID adaptive self-leveling headlights. So adaptive means they're going to aim themselves around corners and over hills and stuff like that. Plus if you got a bunch of people in the vehicle and the back of the vehicle is kind of you know leaning down then it will adapt itself to that to remain level so it's auto leveling auto leveling and adaptive headlights how about that hids by the way okay so also you'll notice here in the front it has this round radar bubble there and that round radar bubble is for the adaptive cruise control uh, the adaptive cruise and also the um, the crash mitigation. The, I'll show you all that stuff on the inside. But literally, the the the, the safety features in this vehicle are just um, endless, which you will see. Okay, so the vehicle is still locked, and this vehicle has a proximity key. So this is the actual key. It's just this little box, and as long as you have this in your pocket or in your purse or just somewhere on you. You can literally, I can lock and unlock the doors here if I want, but all I gotta do really is just walk up and touch the handle and it unlocks the vehicle. Uh, if I wanna relock it, I push this button. So it's as simple as that. I don't have to actually take the key out and fumble around. I just walk up, touch the handle, open the door. Of course, the key has to be with you. It has to be within a close proximity of the car. That's why they call it a proximity key. So here's the inside of the passenger door and man, it is nice. It's nice. You've got the metallic accent there, right there, splitting up the middle. And then the, the kind of like a real light tan and black interior. You do have real wood, real wood accents throughout this vehicle. And there's some of it right there. And you have your door locks and power window controls there. Little, little pocket on the door, place to put a bottle, and then some storage space on the on the side of the door you have that metal Chrysler threshold there in the center and 
power seat on the passenger side with lumbar support and it, you're able to adjust it up and down, in and out, you know, really find the most comfortable position for your back while you're driving. And so here's the seat, has some slight bolstering, but just enough to get you some comfort without, you know, being too intrusive on your body. Super, super comfortable, perforated, heated and cooled leather seats. And you will not believe the comfort of this vehicle. The height off the floor is perfect. Of course, you can adjust that with the power seat. You can go up and down, sort of like a dentist chair. And the glove compartment is felt lined. It also has this little shelf system in here so you can separate your stuff and you know you know keep everything organized and you have that real wood trim there take a look here in the back you see the styling of the back door and there's the back seats and you can see they're a little bit more of a bolstering or a uh, the center of the seat sunken down a little bit to give you a little bit more comfortable uh, seating position here in the back plus you have plenty of leg room you can see the height of the seats compared to the floor is very substantial so um, it keeps your knees from being stuck up too high plus you have the center armrest that has this storage area in it plus a some cup holders and you can fold that out out of the way if you need to so let me go ahead and hop in back here so you can get an idea of the overall size and leg room so my um, I, I'm six foot tall and you can see my knees are not even close to touching that seat and the seats pretty far back as you can see it you saw in the back and then you have one thing missing is tinted windows that's what I would definitely add um, so you have this high, what they call a belt, help, high belt line on this vehicle. So um, it makes you feel like you're in a very luxurious vehicle. Okay, so down here you have some USB ports for charging. Plus you have heated seats and the ability to um, open and close, open up, make the shade go up and down. Uh, so right now I have the remote start. I can't really push that now. I'll show you that when we get in the front because you do actually have to push the button um, to turn everything on up there, which I'll get to that. So there's a shade back here behind me, which I'll, I'll, I'll show you. But anyways, plus you have this huge panoramic sunroof. It goes all the way back here. So I'll show you all that stuff too. All right, so let's go ahead and continue on. to the trunk area. Now these seats, there's a 60-40 split and they fold, do fold down in case you need some more cargo space. So you can have a combination of passenger and cargo space back here. It's really easy to open, open and close them. Okay, so let's take a look at the back. You have the dual chrome exhaust tips. And then the parking sensors back here, which I'll show you all that stuff when we get on the inside. The backup camera lens is concealed right here in the, in the center brake light. So there's a couple ways of opening up the uh, trunk. So you can use the key here, or you can just have the key in your pocket, and you just walk up and you push this button. And it lifts all the way up for you. Okay, so somebody's got the cargo net in place. You've got a cargo net back here and a place to hang stuff like grocery bags or whatever on the back. These little hangers, which is really handy. And under here, see if I can show you with this cargo net in the way. Okay, so I got the net out of the way. So now, here's the spare tire. It's a pretty good size spare tire. It is um, a steel wheel. It's not matching the vehicle but it does give you a spare tire. Plus your battery is back here in the trunk uh, to make it last longer. You can see it's a massive battery. Plus that little funnel right there, I'll tell you what that's for in just a second. Just remember that little funnel. 
Okay, so, and also you gotta check this, this vehicle out at night. Check out my night video. The LEDs are awesome. So let's go ahead and open up the door here on the, for the fuel. And the button for that is right here. This opens up and there's your fuel door op opening up. There's no cap. As you can see, it even has a little cap. No caps allowed. So, <laughs> so you put your nozzle in there, you pump your gas, you don't have to worry about a cap. If you ever need to use a gas can, you do have to use that little funnel. And it even tells you a little comic strip there showing you how to you know, put your funnel in and use your gas can. And there's this little rubber thing to keep stuff from going in there. But also it's a two-stage system there that's sealed up. So it's not gonna let you know stuff just go in your gas tank. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look under the hood. It'll turn off since I got the remote start. Uh, just under here, above the Chrysler symbol, uh, right there in the center, you just push it to the left. And once you lift it up a few inches, it'll automatically go up the rest of the way. Okay, so 3.6 liter. VVT Pentastar V6 awesome engine I mean this is the engine they put in you know Chrysler puts it in a lot of vehicles um, you'll also see it even in the Challenger and some of the trim level so it's in, in the trucks it's, a, it's just a really solid engine so the VVT system uh, is I've got a whole video uh, with Matt uh, Gore in it he's an engineer student and he explains what VVT is but variable valve timing is able to give you higher horsepower while at the same time give you great gas mileage because it's fine tuning and adjusting the, uh, the valves and the timing uh, to give you the optimal, uh, optimal horsepower and torque at the same time, depending on your needs in the moment. It's kind of a little bit more involved than that, but just check out my other video. All right, so let's take a look at... Uh, a little bit better look on the inside all right so here we are on the inside and talk about a classy comfortable car tons of features you're not even gonna believe what this car has okay so let's go ahead and start over here on the door it has the door lock controls power window controls the front two are automatic so basically I just got to push it like that the window goes down and I'm going to roll the window up just slightly. I don't know if you can see that. It does have the acoustic glass. And this kind of two pieces of glass sandwiched. I don't know if you can see that. Sandwiched between. And sandwiched around some acoustic material. Same thing with the windshield. So it gives you really good um, you know, soundproofing through the glass. So the front two are automatic power windows. And then your side mirrors, you just choose which side you want, and then you can adjust it with this pad here uh, to adjust your side mirrors. And the side mirrors are heated uh, when you turn your rear defroster on, they'll turn on. And this does have a preset for your power seats. You can set it uh, for one and two. It'll recognize the key. And so when you get in the vehicle, uh, there's key one and key two. And when you get in, it'll adjust your steering wheel and your seat to the the appropriate position plus as an exit mode so when you turn off the vehicle the steering wheel can get out of the way seat goes back it gets out of the way so you can get out so it's pretty cool okay so your headlight controls are here so there's automatic there's off there's your parking lights and there's your headlights to turn on your your fog lights you just push this in that turns it on and off so here's two dimmer switches. One is for your interior lights uh, around your dash and stuff. It's where you can make it brighter or dimmer. The other is for the ambient light in the vehicle. Now if you check out my night video, uh, you can see that this vehicle has tons of ambient light around. The, around and it makes it really easy to um, you know, see at nighttime. It looks awesome. And there's a button for your trunk to open it up. So the steering column has this little joystick here. And it's a tilt and telescoping column and it's all powered isn't that cool so you can get the right position all you have to do is you don't have to you know reach down there or anything you just 
move it just right where you want it and it's very precise okay so here's the steering wheel speaking of that and the, the steering wheel is leather wrapped and stitched all the way around except for this very top which is real wood and it's super super grippy and uh, it has this just a I don't know how to explain it you have to really grab a hold of it and 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 drive this vehicle because the thickness is awesome and it has a really good grip it looks like it'll be slippery because it's shiny but actually when you touch it it's very grippy and it actually has more of a grip than leather I don't know if you can you know, when I'm pushing the same you see when it reaches there it grips more than down here but anyways um, that's something you kind of need to experience in person I guess so all the, there's tons of buttons on the steering wheel and they all have a really good purpose safety feature and everything so let's go ahead and start here on the right your cruise control settings are here you just have to make sure it's turned on and it'll let you know that the cruise control is on by pushing that button and once it's on you can set it with either one of these buttons and then you can change the speed up and down with these buttons if you want to you can resume your previous speed after stopping or you can cancel the cruise control if you want now this one has the adaptive cruise control which you can turn on there and the adaptive cruise control is crazy awesome because you can I think it shows a, a car there and you can actually drive on the highway let's say you're, you have the cruise control at 65 well if there's a vehicle in front of you that's going 63 or 62 or somewhat slower than you or it doesn't matter what the speed they're going this vehicle will sense their speed and slow your vehicle down to match their speed that way you don't hit them also you don't have to constantly adjust your speed to match the person in front of you let's say they're just fluctuating between 65 or 50 or whatever and it'll constantly change your speed to match them unless you want to pass and go around them but a lot of times you you can't there you're stuck in track you know there's a lot of traffic on the road and you just kind of like have to go with the flow so this will match their speed now these buttons here give you the ability to get closer or further have a closer following distance or a further away following distance i personally prefer and when you when you change it it'll show up here on the screen here how far away you're going i prefer the the far drive the, the far distance now i know you know at certain speeds there's different distances and it will adapt itself to that um, the farther you're away they get the more you have time to react but this actually if the car in front of you slows down even to a stop this vehicle will slow down to a stop and then if they continue on this vehicle will continue back up I mean it's literally that good it'll actually stop your vehicle if the car in front of you stops really cool safety feature convenience feature whatever you want to call it it's definitely a safety feature Plus, you have the lane departure warning system to where if you're going on the highway and you're, in, you're going swerving in and out of the lane or something without turning your turn signal on, it'll alert you. It'll say, hey, what are you doing? Or It's not going to say that, but, you know, it's going to pop up and say, um, you know, that you're going over the lanes without, you know, without using your turn signal. So maybe you're swerving or something, you know, it's trying to alert you just in case you don't know. Plus, it has a blind spot monitoring system. So you see this little triangle here. Hopefully, you can see that in the rear view mirror. Anyways, doesn't really want to focus. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Anyways, there's a little triangle there in the rear view mirror. And that will illuminate. There we go. And get it to the sky. That little triangle will illuminate when there's a vehicle in your blind spot. Plus, if you turn your turn signal on as if you're going to turn into that blind that area, it's going to alert you even more with beeping and you know stuff here on the dash to keep you from actually getting into a collision. Plus, that same feature, it has radar sensors in the side of the vehicle, by the way. That same feature will also help you if you're backing out of a perpendicular parking spot. If they're, you're backing out of the parking spot and there's a car on either side of you driving towards you and you can't see them because there's cars beside you, this vehicle will sense those cars closing in on you and alert you as well. So really, really cool features on the highway and in the parking lot. 
Okay, so another cool, another massive safety, safety feature is the Bluetooth system. So once you pair your Bluetooth phone with the system, you can send and receive calls uh, using these buttons here. So if somebody's calling you, you're on the highway, you're driving or whatever, and you have the radio blast and air conditioning going and all that stuff, you got all this noise going on. If somebody calls you, it is gonna dim out the air conditioning, the radio, everything is gonna get quieter, and then the, you're gonna hear a ringing sound through the sound system. You push that button, you say hello, you start talking to the person, and they probably won't even know you're driving, it's that clear. And when you're finished talking, you just push the hang, this button to hang up. And so that keeps your eyes on the road and hands on the wheel and you're staying productive. The voice recognition button, you can send a, you can send a call with this as well. You can push that button and say call so-and-so, whoever happens to be um, like Stephen Underwood. Call Stephen Underwood, he's in my phone book and you know, it's gonna call him. Uh, you know, so you just have to say the name as if it's spelled, you know, as it's spelled in your phone book. So, um, but also, you know, so that's, that's one of the other features there is dialing out on this button. This is the voice recognition button. And voice recognition, not only can you make calls, but you can turn to certain stations. You can put in, say, certain addresses of, for the navigation, adjust the climate control. I mean, there is just endless the amount of voice commands that you could do to completely control the vehicle. You can stay productive on the phone do all kinds of stuff while your hands are on the wheel and eyes are on the road. Isn't that amazing? It's, the safety features in this vehicle are just crazy. Okay, so up here, um, let me actually get back to that these buttons in a second. Uh, before I show you that, I wanna show you these buttons in the back of the steering wheel. Uh, there's a toggle and then a center button. And it's designed to where your hands on the wheel and in the back, your two fingers in the back can actually do your volume up and down. So I can adjust my volume on the radio and then I can also push the center button to change through AM, FM, satellite radio, okay? On the left side of the steering wheel, it's like a tune through the stations, you know, your tune knob there. It's like that button. And so you can tune through the stations with the up and down and then as a center button which will cycle through your presets there on your radio. So tons of features there on the steering wheel that actually you can that's utilize you can utilize them the front with your thumb, the back with your back fingers, your eyes are on the road, your hands are on the wheel. Heated steering wheel by the way, heated. So in the winter time, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, a heated steering wheel makes all the difference in the world. I mean, when you get in a frigid cold car on a hot day and you've got heated seats and a heated steering wheel, I mean, it's like heaven. So <laughs> I don't know if, you know, if you have any experience with that, you know what I'm talking about. But anyways, okay, enough about the steering wheel for now. Let's look back here. This is your windshield wiper controls and your turn signal there. So here's your gauges. Now you notice it has a combination of black, blue, and then the white just kind of popping through all that stuff, which is just super impressive to me. Plus you have that metallic dials around the outside of each gauge that just screams class so you have your regular gauges here and they're kind of dished out I don't know if you can see that um, so they're like kind of concave there which looks pretty cool to me but also okay so you have your RPMs there on the left you have your speedometer there on the right but in the center you have this big TFT screen and the screen gives you all kinds of information Right now, it's in the speedometer screen, which also gives you your gas gauge and your temperature gauge. And you'll notice on the little fuel pump there, there's a little arrow facing to the left showing you that the fuel door is on your left. But back to these buttons here. These buttons control that screen. And now these are, some, these are, these are things that you don't actually have to scroll through and look at all the time but you do have the ability to have the information in here. So outside temperature is here, um, and then you've got your odometer there in the bottom. But let me go ahead and, so we're in a speedometer. We can stay in there if we want to, but we can scroll down. And when I scroll down, up and down, you see the little number pops up here. So it's part of a menu system. And if you leave it in this particular place, that menu system goes away um, to be less distraction, distracting. So now you just looks like you're in a speedometer. 
So scroll down, vehicle info. Now, when I, when I have more choices to the right and left, you'll see these little things pop up here, these little bars. So I'm gonna scroll to the left, to the right. So right now we're showing tire pressure in each tire. Scroll to the right, to coolant temperature, transmission temperature, which is really handy for um, you know, driving in the mountains when it's summertime and hot or something like that, you know, this is really good to kind of keep an eye on it, you know, if you're concerned with it, you know, especially if you're pulling a camper, pulling, not a camper, a trailer or something like that. Okay, so let's go to the right, vehicle info, oil temperature, okay, that's a really good one, and oil pressure, oil life, how long before you have to change the oil battery voltage and then it scrolls back to your tire pressure so okay so that's your vehicle info screen right and left now scrolling down again is in the third uh, screen and this is your driver assist screen so this is where you can you know adjust your distance um, of your adaptive cruise control plus it has using the adaptive cruise control system it has an, a crash mitigation warning system um, to where if you are closing in on a vehicle and you it's gonna be in a crash I mean you don't have the cruise control set but if you're just driving along and all you're not paying attention and you're closing in on a object and it looks and the vehicle thinks that you're actually going to unavoidable scenario in which you're gonna crash then it's going to slap it's gonna alert you but if you don't respond almost immediately, it's going to slap on the brakes and try to slow you down as much as possible. You're still going to get an accident, but it's a crash mitigation system to where it mitigates the crash and makes it less severe. Uh, because it waits till it alerts you, but if, if, if you're still not responding, then you know it slows your down, vehicle down. So it's a, that's another feature of the, the, that's kind of in with the adaptive cruise control. All right, so scrolling down again, Fuel economy, this is where you get your averages and your real-time um, fuel economy. And then you can, you know, have two different uh, ones, A and, you know, A and B there. Scrolling down again, this is a trip. This is two trips. Uh, so you have two different trips. Now the trip gives your mileage, how many, I mean, how many miles you've driven, your average fuel economy, and your time. So it's a little bit more than just a trip. And this is just whatever your radio is doing. And stored messages will be here. Now, like when you start up the vehicle, uh, it might say um, time for an oil change or something like that. But then that message will quickly, qu kind of quickly go away. And if you're busy, you don't really pay attention to it. So you can go back in there and you say, what was it that, you know, when you got time, you can go into the storage messages and see what the vehicle was trying to tell you. All right. And then screen setup. This is where you can, you know, like say the stuff around the edges, you can change. Like if you don't want the temperature, let's say you want the distance to empty, something like that there, you can change that. And then it scrolls back to the speedometer. So this is a whole menu system that gives you all kinds of information, but you don't have to actually go in there if you don't want to, because if there's anything out of range, like say your tire pressure is low or if time for an oil change, it's gonna pop up and tell you anyway. So you don't have to constantly scroll through and check on all that stuff all the time. You just drive the car and don't worry about it. That's what the computer's for. All right, so let's take a look over here. We do have the signature analog Chrysler clock here in the center top center of the center stack and you can adjust it with this button and you just push this button it'll go through one minute at a time you hold it down and it'll start going faster after a few seconds okay so here's your 8.4 U connect system and this is maxed out pretty much on all the features that you can get on the touchscreen system in a Chrysler so you can see it has these icons here at the bottom and so those are similar two icons on a computer in that you know they serve they give you uh, different options so right now we're in the radio screen and you have your presets there at the top you can adjust your audio over here and um, you know all your AM FM satellite radio and there's lots of different ways of playing music through the sound system besides the radio so let's continue on to the media button and this is where you'll find your USB auxiliary Bluetooth and SD card options and once you um, once you have something plugged into these things they will illuminate so you can that give you those options there and you can kind of cycle through the um, 
the tracks on each one. So your controls are here, and this is where you find your heated and cooled seats, heated steering wheel button, uh, your auto dim mirror, you can turn that on and off. You can also raise and lower your sunshade here, which I'm going to show you. That's what I was talking about earlier. Um, let me go ahead and open that up. And that's what that button in the back can actually, the, the passengers in the back can actually raise and lower that if they want to do that. So that's really cool. So there's that button and there's all kinds of settings in here as well. Oh, let's go back to there. Let's go to settings. And this is where you can change your units like say, um, you know, kilometers per hour or stuff like that and change what your display, have different things on your display, change your clock. Um, your time will actually sync with the navigation system, but you can sync it. You could choose whether you want to have it up here or not. Uh, safety and driving assistance, you can choose um, different settings in there as far as your 40, forward collision warning, you can have near or far, um, the active braking on the forward collision warning. This is a warning, this is actually stopping you. Lane sense warning, you can have, um, you know different sensitivity there and your your power steering it's electric power steering so you can stiffen it up with you can have normal sport or comfort comfort would give you the maximum ease of turning sport would give you more of a stiff feel and then normal is kind of just kind of in between and um, so anyways the park sense sensors when you back up uh, or go forward it'll actually beep at you if you get close to something and you can see so you can have the sound or sound and display which I'll show you that in a few minutes so I mean there's lots and lots of different things um, you can adjust the lights uh, headlight delays auto dim high beams daytime running lights all this stuff you can turn on and off in here and it goes on forever in the settings okay so the next icon will be the climate control you can see it has a dual zone driver and passenger your fan speeds in here and of course you can go into your heat and cool seats options if you want where you want the air, air to blow there in the center uh, recirculation button and you can also sync them so and you sync the driver and passenger so the same temperature basically or you can put it on automatic and set the temperature and just let it roll and it'll adjust everything for you so the next screen is the navigation and the navigation you can just view the map and go and kind of get your bearings and you'll notice with the Chrysler system it's very um, it's based on a Garmin but it's very easy to read all the little speech bubble things like a comic book will pop up so it's easy to read it's easy to see and the clarity and crispness of the resolution of the screen helps out with all that you can zoom in and out if you want to and so let's go ahead and push the navigation button again so we can uh, go in there and we can actually put in an address we can go to recent places that we've been to find points of interest like a restaurant and stuff like that and uh, favorites you, I guess you could save different favorites or you can also go home you hit go home and once if you save your home address in there anywhere in the United States you push it, go home and it takes you home and then you know, you've got trips geo coordinates point on a map I mean there's all kinds of cool stuff in the navigation system that you can that you can use alrighty so let's go ahead and go to the phone um, I'm not gonna pair a phone now but it's really easy to pair it takes like 10 seconds or 20 seconds or whatever so you pair your phone and once you pair it your phone book will be available recent calls it'll also show you a bar a meter for your signal strength and your um, it'll be right around in here your signal strength and your um, battery life will, will show up there on the screen um, you can another another cool thing you could dial has your phone book and all that but let's say you're in the middle of a call and it's it's coming through your speaker so everybody in the vehicle can hear your call if you don't want to everybody to hear it and you need some level of privacy you just hit transfer and it'll transfer it back to your cell phone so you can get your cell phone and talk to them and do a more private conversation good idea you got some your favorites will appear up there once you save them all right so the uconnect apps system now this is the uconnect system once you get the app on your phone you can remote start this thing you can unlock and lock the doors from anywhere you are you could be you know just far away from the vehicle and um, 
and unlock your doors. I mean, it's really cool. You can control your vehicle from a distance. So, but that requires registration, which is comes. It's free for the first six months or so. There's, there's certain things that are free, and some of it's not. But one of my favorite things in this screen is the is the Sirius Travel Link system. I mean, this is crazy. You can go in and get your fuel prices around your area, and you can sort it by brand distance so if like say you're out of town and you need to find the nearest gas station you forgot to get gas i need the closest gas station bam there it is now let's say you're getting a little bit picky and you want to save some gas i mean save some money on your gas you can sort of by price drive a little bit further but look at there you can get actually cheaper gas so and you all you have to do is let's say you want to hit that and it shows you the address the phone number you can call them you can say hey you got restrooms or anything you can go you can hit go now and it'll take you with the navigation right straight there isn't that awesome let's go back there you can search for movie listings you can check out the weather and it'll kind of give you a, a current three to six hour five days stuff like that um, plus you got a weather map which there's not much today's a clear day so there's not much to show but you I guess you can see some stuff down here so you can kind of get an idea of how long the storm's going to last or when it's going to hit you and all that stuff and it, just lots and lots of cool stuff in the travel link system so let me go ahead and get out of that but yeah you also have um let me go to all apps your iheart radio pandora slacker stuff aha uh -huh. these are all programs that uses the data from your cell phone to play see it says via mobile so if you have a limited data supply you want to pay attention to how much data you're actually using because it's going to kind of you know use it whenever, whenever to use it right off your phone so that's basically how that works all right so let's go ahead and put it in reverse which i'll show you the shifter in a few minutes um <laughs> so there's the reverse uh when you put it in reverse not only does the backup camera show up which gives which gives you a really good view it is a wide angle lens but you can see it's not that distorted but it's a little bit of distortion so they give you these guidelines here and the guidelines give you an estimated trajectory of the vehicle especially when you turn the steering wheel you'll see that they turn as well okay so they give you an idea of how wide your vehicle is and which way you're going to go when you back up but also it gives you since this is a stretched out backup uh, lens in the corner areas it's a little bit distorted so I don't know if you can tell it's a little bit of distortion here now so you definitely don't want to go in this red zone when you get backing up yellows kind of close but down in here the closer you get to this vehicle the more distorted it is okay so right here is only a few inches that same distance here down here might be a few feet um, so this is a really you definitely want to pay attention to these guidelines when you're backing up but as a secondary feature, you do have the parking sensors. And then you notice it's showing up here. It shows a picture of the car. And it shows the areas in which the parking sensors are active. And it'll actually light up the areas in which um, there's something there. So if you're there's something in the way, it'll show you. It'll light up this like beep here. And it's there to the right, front right. Um, so it doesn't just beep and, let, and doesn't tell you where it is. It's actually going to tell you precisely where the object is. If it's a moving object, like somebody walking by, you'll actually see, if they're behind you, you'll see them in a camera, but also you'll see the little things lighting, uh, lighting up here as they walk past. Really, really cool safety features. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look down here at the... Uh, climate control there okay so, so redundant buttons okay um, and this is for good reason you have volume button you have a tune through the stations just like on the steering wheel and so that way you can have you know the passenger can use them and stuff like that also your traction control button you can turn that off default is always on the only time you really want to turn it off is if you're stuck in the mud or snow and you need to spin tires to break yourself free or something like that four-way flashes are there back is for the screen to go back out of certain screens your lane departure warning is always on but you can turn that off it's a I mean yeah your lane sense is what they actually call it so you can turn that on or off there and your um, your crash forward collision warning system you can turn that on and off there and 
this is you know to warn you if you're getting close to something so you don't hit them um, but you can turn that on and off I mean let's say you're in bumper to bumper traffic and it keeps warning you and you're like okay whatever you can turn it off parking sensors let's say you're close to something and you need to be close to something that's beeping at you and it's just driving you crazy push that to turn it off okay okay so climate control buttons are down here and these are also on the screen but like I said there's just there's more than one way to do the, the same thing we're a little bit redundant but in a good way your um, your fan speed is here temperatures recirculate the air front and rear defrosters that kind of stuff so you have you know some level of controlling the climate control without actually going on the screen all right so down here is a felt lined kind of storage pocket there with a 12 volt power supply here's a cool place to put a phone let me see what this looks like here my cell phone in here um, okay so it almost fits all the way in there but let's check this out that's pretty cool you can kind of put it there my phone's a little bit too big for that area um, but I'm sure a lot of people's phone will be able to fit in there like that um, so that would probably be an option as far as putting my phone in this vehicle okay so let's go back to the shifter this is actually the shifter it is a just a rotary dial and it's an eight-speed electric transmission basically it's you know you're using electricity to change gears it's not a it's not it doesn't have any cables or anything like that so there's park there's reverse and I showed you with the backup camera neutral and then drive and then to go in this low range you have to push it down and push it to the right and the low range basically just lowers your gear ratio lower than normal so if you're going down a hill and you need some engine braking or something like that um, you can use that low range feature but it's just as easy as turning a dial uh, turning a knob to change the gears it's nothing nothing not a big deal there at all okay so here's um, like this little roll top desk thing going on with some cup holders that have these little spring loaded things to pick up the slack on different size cups plus you have this little place here to put something um, business cards or whatever you want in the center part also it's quite a good place to put your cell phone if you don't have a cup in here and of course you can close it up if you want to center armrest is here this lifts up and in here there's there's some storage area so you've got this little tray that you can take out and dump it like put the coins or whatever so you got this storage area with a 12 volt power supply but also this is where you'll find your auxiliary input USB and SD card inputs so pretty cool area there and especially the tray you kind of because you know if you put a bunch of coins in there in the bottom of this you know it can be hard to fish them out so having that little tray there is, is a really neat way of you know taking stuff out and dumping it and cleaning it out or whatever all right so let's look at the auto dim rearview mirror which is auto dimming right now because i have this shade that's blocking the little sensor over there um, so at night time it's going to dim a little bit to avoid bright lights from shining in your face and blinding you because you need to keep your night vision so you have this assistance button and this is kind of like roadside assistance or just about anything let's say you want to learn how to adjust the clock you can push that button operator will appear and this has its own cellular connection so you don't even need a cell phone connected to this vehicle to use this you can push 911 literally it's going to go dial 911 whether your phone is paired or not it will give you I think it's eight or ten seconds to cancel up here on the screen once you push it but it's actually gonna dial 911 it's no joke um, and then assistance is like you know roadside assistance or any any assistance that you need to learn the vehicle or whatever okay so here's a place to put your sunglasses in there and um, it has like a felt like a foam inside um, to, to keep your glasses from getting scratched tap lights for a quick reading light you also have a spotlight and a floodlight so you have two options flood spot depend on which type of light you need at the moment and this is for your garage door openers automatic 
universal garage door opener controls there. You just have to pair them with your system there. Okay. Visors have lights and mirrors in them. Both of them. Plus, the visor extends out all the way out there. So, in case you need to get that right spot. Plus, it has this little itty bitty thing sticking out. Because, you know, it doesn't matter where the visor's at. The sun's always peeking around it. So, they, uh, they have that feature there to try to avoid that problem. Those features. Okay, so panoramic dual pane sunroof it goes it's huge and that's what these all these buttons are for so I'm gonna go ahead and open up the shade massive now the back part is fixed but the front part you can actually open so I'm gonna vent it like that and close it or I can open it up. And you can see it has this little thing for turbulent air, like to keep the air from being too turbulent. Turbulent. Okay, and then you can close it up. It's really easy to use. And then if you just don't want any light shining in, you can close the shade all the way up. And it's like a, there's no sunroof there at all because it completely blocks 100% of the light from coming in the vehicle. All right, so let's take a look at the visibility back there. Not too bad, especially considering you have all these sensors and cameras and, you know, James Bond type stuff in the vehicle. All right, so what do you think? What do you think of this car? I think it's just crazy amazing. I, I, the comfort when you drive it you got to drive one of these take one for a test drive but it is a exceptional exceptional vehicle tons of features very easy to use um intuitive and and i like the way the dash has this texturing to it uh to keep from having you know glare on the uh, from the sun shining off of it it's like a kind of a rubber feel. It's all soft to the touch. Really, really awesome car. Anyways, you tell me what you think. Tell me, tell me if you have any experience. Do you, do you drive one of these every day? Have you ever taken one for a test drive? Maybe you thought about buying one. You know, let me know your experience. It really helps me out, but it also helps out the people watching this video. And if there's anything I I missed, let's say I you know there's tons of features, so I might have forgot to say something. You know, like that it has a premium Alpine sound system. Maybe you can remind me of that. But there may be some features that I missed. Maybe you can put them in the description, in the uh, in the comment section. I'd really appreciate that. And um, so, anyways, thank you for watching, and thank you to Van Underwood Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram here in Whiteville, North Carolina. They are very, very friendly and easy to get along with. I'm going to leave Stephen Underwood's email address in the description and his phone number, so you can call him up anywhere in the southeastern United States if you're even remotely interested in knowing more information about vehicles or if you're going to buy one whatever even if you have a trade-in he'll handle everything um, so, so all it takes is an email really so his email address will be in the description I highly recommend this dealership and I worked here for two years I know him like family so anyways thank you for watching and I'll see you next time